Well, I, I enjoy. I really enjoy what I do. So I, I'd say go for it. You know, um, I think as I've said, it, it's it's very challenging, but it's also very rewarding. And you, you know, you're providing a service for people. And you know, and for me, the thing that I really enjoy is how you how you deal with you know people and getting to talk to people. Um, well, the future. I mean, in the next five years, I kind of see myself moving towards being a, an independent prescriber. And that, that's somebody who works in conjunction with, with doctors and, and GPs. And it means that I'd be able to actually prescribe medicine for people. And that would take some of the workload off, off general practice, off GPs, which I think would be a, a really good thing to do. So. Um, I'm a physiotherapist, which basically uh, I get involved with helping people back on their feet once they've had um, an injury, for example, or, or a knee replacement, hip replacement, all sorts of things like that. The qualifications and training you need, um, there are a couple of different routes into it now. My routine was, was more of a traditional one. Um, I came in through A-levels, then three years at university. While I was there, I did ver various placements at health centres and hospitals. But uh, there are other routes in. For example, we've got a kid with us now. He's straight from school. Um, he's on day release getting his A-levels and he'll be able to go to university after that. The advantage of that is he's got a lot of on-the-job experience. So he's actually, he's here doing the job whilst getting the qualification as well. Well, I didn't always want to be a physiotherapist. I wanted to be a footballer. But due to personal experience of injury, which is what stopped me from being a a footballer. Um, I suppose that's where I got interested in the physiotherapy bit and, and the, the sports therapy because I had a, had a lot of physio myself and just just the the way I was helped back to fitness if you will really sort of you know when I decided when it, when it came apparent I wasn't going to be a footballer that's what got me into it you know sort of the experience I had with the physiotherapist and and just helping people to get to get back on their feet just really sort of appealed to me. Well, how I got from being a footballer to physiotherapist? Um, well, through sports injury, I suppose. Um, that kind of scuppered my career a little bit um, and got me interested in, in the field of sort of helping people. Um, I, I, I suppose it's, it's kind of a related field, you know, helping people get better after injury. Um, and I, I was just interested in it. Once I, once I knew I wasn't going to be a footballer, I had to really sort of think what I did want to do. And for me, that was the most appealing thing. Yeah, sport's very important to me. In fact, I still play football, play in a Sunday league. And we do get a lot of sports injuries, but we get, I mean, we might have people with a replacement knee or a hip, for example, but we certainly deal with a lot of sports injuries as well. Yeah, I went into physio physiotherapy to help other people. Um, you know, my main reason to begin with was obviously the sport. It was sports related, sports injuries and stuff, but there's so much more involved with it. And you meet so many different people. Um, it's just just helping them get back on their feet. That's the bit that appeals to me. Um, the skills and qualities uh, you need for a physiotherapist. You need to be able to communicate well with people, um, because you you deal with different people every single day of the week with different injuries from different backgrounds. So you need to you, you need to have a caring approach. You need to you need to want to help people, and obviously the communication thing and respect for for. The, the diverse range of people that you meet. I think these are sort of key elements to, to being a physiotherapist. I imagined when, when I first started the job that I'd just be dealing with sports injuries and, and helping footballers get back on their feet. That was how I saw it. But um, from doing the job, you just deal with so many different people, um, sort of from, from, from five to 75 and all sorts of different injuries. And, and that's what keeps it interesting for me, just the, the, the variety of people you meet and the variety of injuries or, or whatever you've got to deal with. Um, yeah, it was, quite, it was quite different to how I thought it would be, but in a really good way. And doing this job, there's, n there's never a dull day. You never get the same day twice. It's always interesting. And I suppose it's the people you meet as well every day. That's what, that's what keeps it interesting for me. Anybody thinking about a career in physiotherapy, um, firstly, you've, you've got to want to help people. You need that caring approach. You need to be able to talk to people. 
and be relaxed because you're going to meet a lot of people who are perhaps um, they've had an injury or they're not very well so they're not going to be at the best so you need to take that into account you need to be able to talk to people and if you've got an interest in it if that's the sort of person you are anyway I think I think it's 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 well worth pursuing it's certainly been worth it for me obviously part of being a physiotherapist you work with a lot of different people so part of the initial um, application process they do a criminal records bureau check um, just just to make sure you're trustworthy and you're, you're not a mad criminal I suppose um, but no seriously you do come into contact with a lot of vulnerable people so it's just part of the process you know and it's you know it, it's a good thing I'm Joanne and I work for Heart of Birmingham um, in the NHS at Bartholomew House. I currently um, PA to Research and Development Programmes Manager, um, which involves me doing a lot of admin support for her, which can include setting up meetings, um, typing out letters for her, minutes, and just general admin stuff for her. I haven't been doing this since I left school. I, when I um, first started, I started as an apprenticeship um, in a GP surgery, um, which I was there for two years. And while I was there, I did um, I MVQ level two and MVQ level three in business admin, which was part of my apprenticeship. It it led me on to where I am now at Bartholomew House and um, what the tasks that I'm doing now. When I left school I didn't really think I would be in the NHS um, because I come out with low GCSEs and low qualifications um, I didn't really see myself going anywhere especially in the NHS. I think when um, I found the job in the NHS I thought it's the best move that I've ever done applying for it. Um, I've come a long way, I've done so much learning and I'm now currently doing a foundation degree in business which I never thought I would do because of um, low GCSEs. If I had said to people um, who are looking for careers I said go for it in the NHS because I've come a long way, I've learnt so much, I've become more confident, the training, it just is the best move that I've ever made. The NHS always encourages you to do anything they um, always got tra provide training for you always want you to learn and better yourself for the future at the moment I don't all I want to do is carry on finishing my qualifications whatever I can do and I do want to stop in heart of Birmingham and maybe take a different career path but at the moment I'm happy where I am I'm just I'm really proud of myself because of everything I've done. I've become more confident. Um, I've achieved so much. I now drive a car which I can afford now, and I'm able to do my own thing all the time now because of what I've done and how I've progressed. I really enjoy my job.